The Battle of Poonarin, was a battle between the militant liberation tigers of Tamil Elam, and the Sri Lankan military during the Sri Lankan Civil War for control of the military base in Poonarin in northern Sri Lanka from 11 November to 14 November 1993. The LTT launched a surprise attack, codenamed Operation Thavalai, on the government-controlled area of Poonarin, overrunning the garrison and capturing military hardware before withdrawing against military reinforcements introduced through seaborne landings. Chapter 1 – Background Following the withdrawal of the Indian peacekeeping force, the Sri Lanka Army expanded its presence in the Poonarin area establishing a permanent base in 1991 to counter LTT movements across the Kilali Lagoon from the Jaffna Peninsula which was under its control. The Sri Lanka Navy deployed a detachment at Poonarin to monitor and interdict LTT movements in the Kilali Lagoon. Chapter 1 Section 1 – The Military Base by November 1993, the military base in Poonarin with a naval detachment at Nagasivanthari consisted of 55 officers and 2,100 men. The army garrison at Poonarin consisted of troops from the 1st Battalion, Sri Lanka Light Infantry and 3rd Battalion, the Java Regiment as well as a Sabre troop from the 4th Armoured Regiment, Sri Lanka Armoured Corps with two T-55A main battle tanks. The Navy had stationed five inshore patrol crafts at Nagasivanthari. Chapter 1 Section 2 – LTT Preparations The military bases in Poonarin and Elephant Pass effectively blocked LTT movements between Wani and Jaffna. President D.B.Y. Jetunji's government increased the pressure on the LTT. The LTT began secretly planning an attack on Poonarin, preparing for several months. On 24 September 1993, the military launched Operation Yell Davy to eliminate LTT boat landing sites around Kilali. The Ministry of Defense claimed 108 soldiers were killed in the operation and 350 LTT carders were killed, LTT confirmed only 96 of its carders were killed. Six weeks later the LTT launched Operation Thavalai to destroy the isolated military base in Poonarin, and the detachment at Nagathavantharai. Weapons captured from seized from Janakapura, were put into use. Chapter 2 – Battle Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Initial Assault On the 11th of November, around 2 a.m., the LTT launched a massive attack from land and the lagoon with 600 carders, simultaneously engaging the Nagathavantharai naval detachment and the army defense lines in Poonarin. LTT leader Colonel Bonu led the assault on Nagathavantharai, while Brig. Thiepen led the assault on Poonarin. The garrison was taken by surprise as it had not expected an amphibious assault from the lagoon. The LTT infiltrated a specially trained group of carders through the forward defense lines, with the mission of overrunning the mortar positions and the two T-55 tanks. The infiltration groups were successful in capturing the mortar and armor positions in the initial phase of the assault. Within hours the forward lines were breached and the perimeter of the military base came under attack. The naval detachment was overrun and its installations including a radar station were destroyed. Heavy fire from LTT anti-aircraft guns prevented air support dispatched by the Sri Lanka Air Force. By dawn, Large parts of the base were overrun, including the base armory, which was emptied by the LTT, who had also captured the two T-55 tanks. The LTT had planned to capture a tank in the battle. Some army units still managed to hold out in bunkers along the shore. Most of the troops fighting back formed independent groups. With the battalion headquarters of the 3rd Gajaba being overrun, the garrison lost contact with the Northern Command under Major General Rowan Delu Watt at the Palali military base. Remaining units that regrouped around the battalion headquarters of the 1st Sri Lanka Light Infantry were able finally to contact the Elephant Pass military base. Chapter 2 Section 2 – Massacre of Prisoners Following the fall of the main base, the military alleged that around 200 officers and soldiers who had surrendered to the LTTE by dawn, were executed by the LTTE according to the Sri Lankan military. Chapter 2 Section 3 
relief operation. Following the attack, the three service commanders flew to Paleli, setting up their operational joint headquarters there to plan relief for the besieged garrison. Due to heavy anti-aircraft fire from the LTT, air support was difficult, with one SLAF aircraft being damaged due to anti-aircraft fire, but the pilot managed to land the aircraft at SLAF Paleli. Since it was not possible to airdrop relief troops, plans were drawn up for an amphibious operation. With heavy resistance, the Navy executed an amphibious landing on 14 November. With covering fire from Shanghai-class fast gunboats, the newly formed Special Boat Squadron, led by Lieutenant Commander Ravindra Y. Jegunaratan carried out the initial landings from two inshore patrol craft, securing a beachhead. This was followed with the landing of troops from the Army. Troops broke out of the beachhead and linked up with surviving pockets of resistance from the original garrison. With the inflow reinforcements, the LTT withdrew. Chapter 3 Aftermath the LTT withdrew by the evening of the 14th of November and the Army re-established its base in Poonarin. The Army Commander Lieutenant General Cecil Wadian and the Northern Area Commander Major General Rowan Deluwatt visited the base on the 15th of November 1993. Although the LTT failed to hold on to the area it captured and was forced to withdraw, it had inflicted considerable damage to the military. The naval detachment at Nagathavantharai was overrun, with all five inshore patrol crafts being lost as two were sunk and three were captured by the LTTE. The Navy radar station was also destroyed. The LTTE had overrun the gun and armor placements, capturing a 120mm heavy mortar, 50mm guns and the two T-55 tanks. The SLAF was able to destroy one of these tanks by an airstrike shortly afterwards, but the other tank was used by the LTT until the last days of the war when it was destroyed. Having captured the base armory, the LTT removed large quantities of other arms and ammunition, which it used for attacks it carried out thereafter. The military had suffered heavy casualties with local media reporting 241 soldiers, including eight officers, killed in the fighting, and another four officers and 396 soldiers missing in action since presumed, dead. The Ministry of Defense records 229 killed which included 10 officers, 561 wounded and 92 missing the military claimed that over 500 LTT carders were killed, while the LTT only acknowledged over 100 killed. The 3rd Gajaba had suffered 149 killed and 115 missing, which included four officers and its second-in-command Major Uhima Pala, who was posthumously promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. The remaining personal 3rd Kajaba were transferred to Pele and reformed. Major TTR Silva of the 1st Sri Lanka Light Infantry was given a field promotion for preventing the complete fall of the garrison. Two officers, Lieutenant AWMNM De Silva of the 1st Sri Lanka Light Infantry and Lieutenant KWT Nisonka of the 3rd Kajaba were posthumously awarded the Weera Vikram of Ibushamaya second highest award for combat bravery. In 1996, Nisonka's award was elevated to the Parama Weera Vibushamaya the highest decoration awarded by the Sri Lankan military. Badly wounded, Lieutenant Nisonka, commander of a platoon of the 3rd Battalion, Kajaba Regiment, which held the forward defense line till dawn, sacrificed himself to provide cover for the remainder of his platoon to withdraw with its wounded. Chapter 3 Section 1, Court of Inquiry Lieutenant General Wadian appointed an court of inquiry into the incident headed by Brigadier T. N. De Silva. The COI found several senior officers at fault, which included Brigadier Lionel Balagali, Director of Military Intelligence, Brigadier Shanta Kotegoda, and Major General Rowan Deluwatt for their failure to prevent a major attack by the LTTE. Major General Rowan Deluwatt had claimed that five battalions from his command had been moved to the eastern province to conduct facilitate elections, contributed to the disaster. The transfer was ordered by the General Hamilton Wanisingi, the General Officer Commanding of the Joint Operations Headquarters which could not be countermanded by Lieutenant General Wadian. 
Lieutenant General Wadian refuted these by stating that Deluwat should have managed with resources at his disposal which included 31,370 troops under the Northern Command at the time of the attack. The Khoi found shortcomings in the preparedness of the Poonarin base to face such an attack, with over 600 of the troops stationed at the time being fresh recruits and disciplinary action hadn't been taken following the Battle of Janakapura in July 1993 which had found fault with Major General Rowan Deluwatt and three others. The report of the COI was present to the President on 31 December 1993. General Wadeyan accepted much of the blame and stepped down as Army Commander, retiring in December 1993. Chapter 4 – Withdrawal and Recapture of Poonarin In mid-1996, the military withdrew its garrison from Poonarin due to tactical reasons, leaving the LTT to occupy the area, and use it to launch attacks on Sri Lankan government-controlled area in Jaffna, the Palali airbase was subjected to artillery fire from Poonarin. In late 2008 the Sri Lanka army launched a fresh offensive in the north of the island. The units of the Task Force 1 recaptured the Poonarin area on 15 November 2008. 